What's going on everyone? This is Luke from South Beach Sports and welcome to the video that I've been excited to make for a very, very long time. And that is the full expansive Miami Heat free agency and trade season preview. I started making these videos, uh, I think early June when I made this Colin Sexton's Miami Heat video. And since then, I've really focused on just preparing you guys for free agency and for this off season for the Miami Heat, which I think is oh so important. Uh, since then, I've just gained so many new supporters and I've gotten so many more views and it's my, the channel has just gotten way healthier. Uh, if you guys remember, well, those of you who are here in around that May period, I was getting anywhere from like 60 to 80 views a video and the views I'm getting now has just increased to like 700 to 800 views a video, which is just awesome. It's amazing. And I couldn't have done it without you guys. So thank you so much for supporting this channel. I should point out that at the recording time of this video, Russell Westbrook just got traded to the Lakers. So that is just caught me completely off guard. I was setting up my stuff to record and I got the Woj notification first about Buddy Heald going to the Lakers or excuse me, getting straight to the Lakers. And then I saw the Shams report that the, uh, the Lakers and the Wizards were engaged in trade talks for Westbrook. And it was this this battle between Shams and Wa the Shams and Woj. So yeah, there's a lot of there's gonna be a lot of nervous and anxious excitement in this video. So we'll see how it goes. With Westbrook getting traded to the Lakers, I'm not really gonna discuss what this means for the Lakers because it's not a Lakers channel, it's a Heat channel. And I'm going to discuss what this means for Bradley Beal. So with Westbrook getting traded, I think this opens up the avenue for Bradley Beal possibly requesting a trade as the Wizards have failed to surround a playoff caliber team or a serious playoff caliber team around Beal. And there were obviously reports that Beal would welcome a trade to another team. And I think with this Westbrook trade that this, this um, request could end up happening. Woj did report though that this trade was actually for Bradley Beal in a way that the Wizards now have the cap space to go to go out and surround Beal with talent. I am not sure about this to be completely honest. I'm not sure if the if Beal would have the same takeaway from this trade. So let's say if Beal does request a trade for my for Miami's best hope in actually acquiring him, it would need to happen post draft instead of pre draft or mid draft. Also, another thing before I actually make my point, uh, I realized that if Beal does get traded within the next 24 hours, because this video is not going to be released till Friday at 6 p.m., then I would have to scratch out a pretty good chunk of this video. So selfishly, I hope that if there is a trade, that it doesn't happen within the next 24 hours. When it was back to my original point about why if I were a Heat fan, I would want be able to request a trade post draft instead of either before the draft or mid draft is because if Beal does request a trade either in the, in the beginning of the draft or before the draft, then a team like the Warriors who have been linked to Beal a lot over the past couple weeks definitely have the amount of assets and draft capital to trade for him. The Warriors obviously have the 7th and the 14th overall pick in this year's draft. They have James Wiseman who was the second overall pick in last year's draft. Uh, they have Andrew Wiggins, who is a solid player in his own right, but more importantly, he is due a contract of, I think, $30 million, which means it's easy to work the contracts out when trading for Beal, who has a similar contract. So let's just say we're post-draft and Beal actually requests a trade. The Warriors, I believe, and I'm not 100% sure on this, could still trade their 7th and well, whoever they selected with the 7th and 14th pick in a trade unless they sign both those players to contracts. I think the way the rule works is that you cannot sign players, one knows for sure, you can't trade players who you recently signed to contracts. I think it's like a 30 day grace period uh, with that. But if the Warriors do not sign their two draft selections, then I believe they, they could send their draft rights away to Washington in a hypothetical trade, similar to what the Cavs did in 2014 when they sent the draft rights to Andrew Wiggins uh, away to Minnesota in exchange for Kevin Love. Aside from the, from the Warriors, there are also a couple teams like the Celtics and the Sixers who will most definitely have interest in Beal, but because this is a Miami Heat free agency and trade season preview show, let's talk about Bradley Beal and the Miami Heat. 
So in a possible trade package for Bradley Beal, I think it's pretty self-explanatory that Tyler Hero would of course have to be in this package. I know there's a lot of Tyler Hero fans and I talked about Tyler Hero in my previous video, but I mean for Bradley Beal who is only 28 years old, you absolutely have to pull the trigger. Considering Bradley Beal is what many expect to be the most attractive trade option in this year's offseason, and that's ahead of Damian Lillard, probably because of an age thing, but you can't just send the players that you have right now in Tyler Hero, Press Chua, Casey Akpala, in exchange for Bradley Beal and expect that trade to actually happen. You have to acquire a boatload of first round picks, which the Heat currently do not have any. So there are definitely a lot of avenues uh, in which the Heat could create some first round picks and I'll explain those now. So there is a way that the Heat could acquire, I think, four first round picks and three pick swaps, which would be unbelievable considering the Heat literally have no draft capital for this upcoming offseason. So if the Heat are able to find a way to facilitate a trade that would unprotect that 2023 first round pick that the Thunder currently hold, then that would just open up a plethora of possible draft capital that the Heat would now have. Some other avenues is the Heat could trade away Kendrick Nunn signing trade and possibly get a first round pick in return. Same thing with Duncan Robinson, who I think I said in an earlier video could net two first round picks in return in a sign and trade but considering sign and trades usually aren't of equal value that's a little more unlikely he could also trade away press Chua for i think a uh, future protected first round pick as i don't think that press Chua's trade value has necessarily dropped from his rookie season so there's definitely some available avenues that the heat could acquire a first round pick now this isn't an in-depth player breakdown video on Bradley Beal, so I'm not going to, going to get into what he would look like on the Miami Heat, but obviously he would be a near perfect fit with them. Let's say that the Heat are able to acquire the best case scenario, four first round picks and three pick swaps, then their best possible package in a Bradley Beal trade would probably look like Tyler Hero, four first round picks, three pick swaps one of either Goran Dragic or Andre Iguodala for salary cap purposes. I imagine it would be Goran Dragic as the Wizards likely find him to be the more attractive asset of the two, and maybe even Kaysak Pala if he's, if he's still with the team at this point. With that being said though, I would damper your expectations a little bit if you are almost expecting the Bradley Beal to the Miami Heat trade because there are a lot of teams that could package together a better trade than the Heat. Uh, the Celtics could do that if they trade away Jalen Brown, who I actually believe is better than Bradley Beal, but that is not the topic of this video. But that package would obviously outweigh whatever the Heat put together. The Sixers could put together a better trade package if they uh, include Ben Simmons and maybe like Tyrese Maxey in a deal. The who am I thinking of? The Warriors could obviously put together could still put together a better trade package. James Wiseman, whoever they select at 7 and 14. So the Heat seem like a long shot to acquire Bradley Beal at this point, just given that they don't have an overwhelming amount of assets. But it's definitely to, to, still something to definitely watch out for. And if I'm you, I would definitely at least keep a close eye out for Bradley Beal. The next two players I want to talk about today are Brandon Ingram and Lonzo Ball, both of whom have been linked to the Heat a lot over the past couple weeks. With Brandon Ingram, there was a report by Adam Barai of 5 Reason Sports. First, I want to mention that Adam Barai is a very reliable source. He had the uh, breaking news of Jimmy Butler signing to the Heat an hour before Woj or Shams reported it, so he's a very reliable guy. He said that Brandon Ingram would welcome a trade to the Miami Heat. This doesn't mean that Ingram flat out requested a trade from New Orleans, doesn't mean that he said that he really wants to go to Miami. All he said was that he would welcome a trade to the Heat, which at the very least is a step in the right direction. Now Ingram is probably at the top of my list of the realistic offseason targets for Miami. Notice how I'm not saying it's Bradley Peel because I really don't think that he's a super realistic option right now, but you know, whatever. Uh, Brandon Ingram would obviously be a huge addition. He's an all-star caliber player at 23. He fits uh, multiple championship windows in that he would be able to play at a high level during Jimmy's uh, championship window. And considering that he's the same age as Bam, that's another championship window right there. So he would definitely pair up really nicely with Bam to be a duo for, I would hope, the next decade. And he is a very good scorer, he's lengthy, he can shoot, he can drive to the basket, and he would overall just be a terrific addition. 
So what would a Brandon Ingram trade package look like? Well, it would obviously be have to center it around Tyler Hero once again, which I have no problem doing. Uh, it would require some first round draft picks, which as I mentioned earlier, the Heat would have to acquire through trades. And I don't think it would be as lucrative as a uh, package for Bradley Beal, but considering Ingram is a 23 year old all-star, it would still have to be a very impressive package. There are reports uh, over the past week that have said that the Pelicans are big fans of both Duncan Robinson and Goran Dragic. For Duncan Robinson though, I mean, don't expect a sign and trade with Robinson for Ingram because no matter how big of a fan the Pelicans are in Robinson, there's no way they would just trade away their 23 year old all-star player for Duncan. So I wouldn't really look at Duncan Robinson in a sign and trade as a possible uh, package for Ingram. One thing though with Goran Dragic is that the Pelicans could value him a little bit more than some other teams would, meaning that if the Heat can package together Tali Hero, Goran Dragic, and some other first round picks, they then the Heat could have themselves a possible deal. As for the other New Orleans Pelicans player that the Heat have been linked to this past week, which is obviously Alonzo Ball, I would not be that big of a fan of this. Uh, I've already mentioned Alonzo Ball in my five players that Heat should avoid video, and this isn't really a shot at Alonzo Ball. I think he's a very good player. I think he fits a very nice role on the Pelicans, and I'm kind of questioning why they wouldn't want to bring him back. But the thing is, uh, I think a lot of Heat fans see Lonzo Ball as a point guard, someone who can be a primary playmaker in offense, when in reality I just don't see it. I don't think Lonzo Ball has the necessary court vision to really excel as a point guard. He struggles sometimes in pick and roll sets and reading the defenses. And for the Heat's pick and roll heavy offense, that would definitely be a problem. As I mentioned earlier with Lonzo Ball in a previous video, uh, while I think he's a great passer, especially in transition, I don't think he possesses the necessary court vision or the uh, well enough ability to read defenses to becoming a great playmaker at least right now i'm not saying he can't develop this in the future but at least right now i don't see this from ball uh, if the heat are more interested in lots of ball than i am then i could see a possible sign and trade straight up that would have Duncan Robinson getting signed and signed and traded away to the Pelicans and Lonzo Ball getting signed and traded away to the Heat. This would be a pretty even contract swap as both of these players could expect to receive a contract in the same range. And while I wouldn't be the most thrilled with this deal, I know a lot of you guys, especially a lot of you guys who are Lonzo Ball fans might like this deal a lot more. The next player that I want to talk about today is probably the most popular realistic free agent option for Heat fans and that's Kyle Lowry who has been linked to the Heat for a while now ever since the trade deadline when it seemed like he was about to get traded to the Heat but the Raptors wanted Tyler Hero, the Heat didn't want to give up Tyler Hero so a deal was not made. There is still that mutual interest though between Lowry and the Heat. Uh, Lowry is of course good friends with Jimmy Butler, so the two would obviously have a very good connection if Lowry ends up signing with the Heat. So I just got a quick notification on my phone that said uh, from Shams that said that Bradley Beal has no desire to leave the Wizards as of now. And that, that doesn't necessarily invalidate the first 10 minutes of this video in which I talked about Bradley Beal for a lot of time, but at least it appears right now that he's not going to get moved. But it's definitely a situation that I would continue to look at for the rest of the offseason. Now anyways, back to Lowry. The biggest uh, concern for the Heat is the type of contract that Lowry is expected to want. It was reported around the trade deadline that Lowry wanted a contract of two years for around $50 million, and that's very, very doable for the Heat. But it is now being reported that Lowry wants a contract of three years for around $90 million, which definitely could create some problems for Miami. Just giving Kyle Lowry $30 million in his, in his age 38 season is already a problem enough, but with this deal, I think it also provides teams with the possibility to overpay Kyle Lowry, something that the Heat necessarily don't have the cap space to do. Uh, the Pelicans, for, for instance, have the uh, necessary cap space to overpay for Lowry, giving him that three-year $90 million contract or even a little bit more if they have to, whereas the Heat, they already uh, have a, gave a max contract to Bam Adebayo, they have to extend uh, Jimmy Butler this offseason, and they still want to make moves for the rest of free agency. So this three-year $90 million contract may be a little bit out of their price range. 
there's also a chance that Lowry could Lowry and his team could be using this three year 90 million dollar figure as a way of driving up his price a little bit and creating a bidding war for Lowry which is definitely a possibility also something for you guys to take in for you guys to take into account uh, if a sign and trade happens between the heat and Kyle Lowry it would have to be for three or more years you cannot perform a sign and trade for two or fewer seasons I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about Miles Turner and Malcolm Brogdon as there really hasn't been a lot of smoke connecting them to the Heat. As for Miles Turner, there was a report around the trade deadline that the Heat had interest in Turner. Obviously nothing materialized, but Miles would be a tremendous fit next to Bam both on offense and on defense. On offense, Turner would slide in as a starting center, he would stretch the floor, he's a good three-point shooter, and you obviously need a good shooter next to Bam in the front court. On defense, Turner is a tremendous rim protector he led the league in blocks last year and i think he's versatile enough to switch onto guards at times which is a major premise of the heat's defense as for malcolm brogdon there really hasn't been anything that i've heard connecting him and the heat but the pacers did offer him to the sixers in exchange for ben simmons so it's not like brogdon is untouchable or anything uh, in a deal for brogdon i think he would probably have to give up tommy hero and maybe another asset or first round pick and Brogdon would provide the Heat with uh, obviously a starting point guard. He's a very consistent scorer. He'll give you 19 to 21 points a night. And uh, Brogdon isn't the flashiest player, but he's able to get to his spots. He's a good driver. He can shoot the ball very well. Uh, he's a good defender as well. Uh, he's a good playmaker. He would be the primary playmaker in the Heat's offense. And I've mentioned before how badly the Heat need a starting caliber point guard, and Brogdon would obviously fill in this role very nicely. The next player that I want to talk about is Ben Simmons, who was linked to the Heat earlier this week as a little possible destination if he is moved from Philly. Uh, personally, I don't buy that at all. There was uh, concerns in Philly and uh, reports after Jimmy Butler's stint in Philly that him and Ben Simmons really didn't get along super well. And Ben Simmons on offense would just be a complete disaster, in my opinion. On defense would be amazing, I'm not denying that. They would probably have the best defensive starting five in the entire NBA. But on offense, it would be a complete disaster as the spacing with Simmons, Butler, and Bam would just be atrocious. And I mean, some of the packages that the, the Sixers have asked from other NBA teams for Ben Simmons have just been like, um, like I, I can't put into words how, mu how much they want in exchange for Ben Simmons. They asked the Cavaliers for all of their young assets, which I assume includes Darius Garland, Colin Sexton, uh, Isaac Okoro, um, not sure about Jared Allen because he's a restricted free agent, but you get the point, including a multitude of first round picks. Like they're asking for a James Harden type package in exchange for, for ben. ben Simmons. And, sorry, I, I tried to, there was a little issue with the mic there. I tried to mash that up correctly. If it sounds weird, I apologize. But it, the conclusion I'm trying to draw here is that the Sixers have not been realistic at all in what they want for Simmons, uh, whether it's a problem of overvaluing Simmons uh, I just don't get it because they've been asking for so much more than what I uh, thought they would ask and even if the Heat did want to acquire Simmons uh, Philly would probably ask for Bam Adebayo in return and obviously the Heat wouldn't do that as for the last player I'm going to do a lengthier preview on uh, is Colin Sexton and Sexton seems like the most likely option at this point. There was reports, uh, I think a couple weeks ago, that said Sexton could get moved to the Heat on draft day. There was a report by Adam Barai a couple days ago that uh, rebuked this and said that the Heat wouldn't look to acquire Sexton necessarily on draft day. They want to keep their options open and possibly trade for Sexton at a later time. But Colin Sexton, in my personal opinion, would be a terrific acquisition for the Heat. He isn't really a point guard, but he fits that scoring will need. Um, he fits multiple championship windows. I think he would contribute in Jimmy Butler's championship window, as well as continue to develop and have another championship window with Bam Adebayo. Sexton was, I think, one of the more underrated players in the NBA last year. He averaged a very quiet uh, 24 points a game last year with the Cavaliers, and his shooting splits were very impressive. I believe he shot... 48% from the field, 47% from three, 
and like 88% from the free throw line. Those numbers might be a little off. Um, I don't have them on hand right now. But the main point that I'm trying to draw here is that Sexton was a very good scorer last year and was actually pretty efficient in doing so. As for what a possible trade package for Colin Sexton could look like, Tyler Hero would obviously be the centerpiece of a, this deal once again as he is the centerpiece of most trade packages that I've put together today. The Heat would also likely have to give up Precious Achua and Andre Iguodala as reported by the good people of 5 Reasons Sports. The Heat also might have to find a way to get another first round pick and use that in a possible deal. And with the Cavs, they could find they could use this trade as a way of relieving themselves of the Kevin Love contract. Kevin Love is obviously overpaid right now, but if he is on the Heat, he could rejuvenate his career, not obviously to the all-star level he was at in Minnesota and Cleveland, but similar to the way that Blake Griffin rejuvenated his career in Brooklyn, Kevin Love would obviously be a great fit on offense next to Bam Adebayo as Kevin Love is still a very solid shooter. I have some questions on how Love would be on defense, but I don't think that's necessarily super important. If you can get Colin Sexton, if you can get Colin Sexton in this trade, then I would be very happy with it and I'm willing to take on the chance of whatever Kevin Love would bring in return. So now to just to wrap up this preview video, which is already pretty long, I think we're at 21 minutes right now, I'm going to mention a few guys that while they're not the biggest names of the world, the Heat obviously the Heat could have interest in them. Some of these players are Spencer Dinwiddie and Bobby Portis. One of these players I am a much bigger fan of than the other. Spencer Dinwiddie has been reported to wanting a contract somewhere in that 23 to 25 million dollars per year range. I, I saw somewhere that he wanted a five year 125 million dollar deal. And if the Heat gave him that, I would just be mad i would be very i would be very very mad if he gave dinwiddie that type of contract he's a good score but i think he's better fitted uh, as a six man type player similar to jordan clarkson he's inefficient i think he shot uh, like 42 percent from the field in uh, the season that he had which he averaged 21 a game he's a decent playmaker decent passer he averaged seven assists per game in 2019 and 2020 but he i don't think he's as good of a player to warrant such of a lucrative contract. Now, the player that I would be a big time fan of if the Heat acquired is Bobby Portis, who has become almost of a meme as of right now because of his eyes or whatever. He's a fan favorite right now in Milwaukee, and there has been uh, reports of interest in Bobby Portis from Miami. And if the Heat are able to acquire Portis, who currently has a player option in Milwaukee, which I think he will decline considering uh, Portis could get receive a contract that would just, I think, outweigh his current contract by like 300%. Like that, the market value for Portis is so much more than his current player option that I think he's going to decline that. But uh, my opinions on Bobby Portis... Uh, I would love the fit next to Bam. He wasn't a starter this year. I would expect him to be the starting center for the Heat if he is acquired. He is a stretch uh, five. He can shoot the ball really, really well. And that's obviously, like I said, something you need next to Bam. On defense, uh, he proved in the playoffs that he's versatile enough to switch onto guards. He's not Bam, uh, he's, he's not Bam levels of versatile. But he's definitely versatile enough to hold his own. We saw at times in the Eastern Conference Finals that he switched onto Trey Young and had success doing so. And he's just an enforcer. He's, he, he would be a fan favorite in Miami. He would bring a lot of what the Heat were missing uh, when they didn't have Jay Crowder this past season. And I would just love that acquisition. There's also some cheap free agents that the Heat could be interested in uh, in the later parts of free agency, like a Markeith Morris, James Ennis, uh, re reunion with Wayne Ellington. Speaking of reunion, it wouldn't surprise me if the Heat and Josh Richardson were able to, you know, reunite in a trade. Uh, I'm a big fan of Josh Richardson, and I think he could provide solid bench minutes for them. Uh, also on the topic of reunion, there's Justice Winslow, and I'm probably the biggest Justice Winslow fan there is, or one of the biggest Just Justice Winslow fans there is, but he struggled a lot last year on Memphis, and I'm really not sure if he could uh, clog in key minutes for a playoff team, but there are definitely some cheap guys like the ones I mentioned, also with Matt, Wes Matthews is another option 
that the Heat could definitely be interested in. Notice how in this preview video I did not mention Kawhi Leonard or Damian Lillard because they're not gonna happen. Or okay, let's I don't think it's gonna happen. Even if Damian Lillard does request a trade, I don't think the Heat have anywhere near the amount of assets for Lillard. I think the only way the Heat could make that trade happen is if they give up bam which i don't think they will i mean i mentioned that way the the avenue in which the heat could acquire like four first round picks and three pick swaps when i was talking about bradley beal i guess the heat could theoretically do the same thing for lillard but i just don't see it happening uh with Kawhi leonard there was a report by Woj this past uh this past week or in his podcast that he said that he doesn't expect Kawhi to, to lead the clippers and i that makes complete sense uh, Leonard is from LA. He bought a house there not too long ago and he's rehabbing a, a, an ACL injury and I just don't expect Kawhi to go anywhere this offseason. And with that being said guys, we are finally done with the video. Uh, I, get, I think I got into pretty much everything that I want to talk about. Uh, this, the video took a long time, uh, both recording and planning, so make sure to uh, give me a like on this video. You know what I'm saying? If you like the video and if you enjoy content like this, also subscribe and comment down below your predictions for the Miami Heat this free agency. Once again, guys, I am so thankful for the support that I've received on this channel for the past couple of months, and I cannot wait to continue making videos for you guys in the future. With that being said, I will catch you later. Peace.